Welcome, foot travelers. I'm Micah. And I'm Simon. We are back in Seattle, and for this episode, we are actually visiting a restaurant named Waz. And the restaurant is a Kaiseki restaurant, and it's located pretty much in the shadow of the Space Needle. Yeah, Simon, uh, this restaurant, we've actually been, man been uh, monitoring their uh, menu for a really long time now, and we've been looking for the right menu to make our reservation. And right when uh, August came around, we made the we made the reservation for August. Yeah, one of the cool things that they do is they actually change their menu every month. So, you know, you kind of get that, uh, got to do some little searching and looking for that kind of the right uh, menu that gives you the ingredients you want to try for that time. So that's what they are actually really known for, which I think is pretty cool. And one thing I, I really appreciate this restaurant is when you set your uh, time for the reservation, they pretty much seat you right at that time. So you, even if you're early, like you see in the beginning of this video, you, you just gotta wait until it's your time to sit in. And then they serve everybody, I, I believe it's what, like two or three hours, and then it's the next uh, group of people who come in and, and start the meal again. You want to set up at least a two hour minimum to, to dine there because um, as you'll see through the video, there are about eight courses you go through and they kind of watch all the guests that are sitting at the same time and, and kind of time everything in terms of serving all the plates. All right, this is going to be our sakizuke on the soda course tonight. Uh, we seared that, topped that off with a lime and chili paste and a citrus soy sauce. Uh, so this one, try to eat it in one or two minutes. Yeah, and then starting off here with our dish here, they actually um, they will serve you the dish, then they will explain how to eat this dish, and they will also uh, tell you, oh, with this first one, you want to eat with uh, one or two uh, bites. Yeah, that's one of the, uh, I think the, the great kind of uh, marks of a great restaurant is, you know, they'll sit there and they'll explain the ingredients and how they want you to, to try the food. Um, so it's kind of a, a journey, a food journey as you go through being uh, led by the chef and everybody who's involved with giving you the food. And if you've never been to a, a restaurant kind of like this style, you may think, oh, there's so, it's just one or two pieces. Am I going to be full? Or am I going to be hungry? Later, you're going to be, ju it's just going to be just enough or even a little bit full by the end of the meal. Because I, I, I think in terms of like the, spacing in the, in the timing of how or when they serve you this uh these uh, dishes it pretty much fills you up yeah mike i completely agree um to me every time that we've gone um it always seems just about right i'll leave nice and full without being too stuffed and you know not wanting more so it works out just to be just right for me um also i wanted to note that the interior there's not too many seats here so um in terms of being sat on the bar, you know, there is probably a handful of seats, maybe I'd say 10 at most. And then you'd have some uh, um, table seating. But in terms of total seating, there very isn't that much. So a reservation is definitely recommended. Yeah, and, and there is no a la carte. Uh, they do uh, say that on their uh, website as well. Uh, so that is something to be mindful of when you do make your reservation here. So. Uh, starting off with this uh, next dish here, we have this uh, cream corn soup and uh, king salmon and I thought this soup was really really good. It was so smooth. It's like they strained it multiple times and it's just like, just, it's just so good. Yeah, I completely agree, especially for the summer. It's this nice cold sweet corn puree soup and uh, it's just uh, has this nice, you know, sweetness. It just summer blended into a little cup and for you to drink. Um, it is great. Though I must say that for that uh, king salmon uh, with the lime, I, I wasn't that big of a fan of that one. I, I feel like it was a little bit on dry side for the piece that I had. But the uh, sal I, I feel like, is it like a salad or, or like a um, uh, seaweed uh, mix with uh, soy milk? That little other dish, that one was really good. Yeah, overall those three, uh, the trio, it was a nice appetizer to kind of start and kind of, you know, tempt the taste buds and get everything revved up for what's to come. 
So definitely a, a great start to the meal. And then moving on to this uh, next dish, we, we got this um, squid dumpling with uh, tofu and clear uh, dashi broth with uh, yuzu uh, peel and microgreens. It was, it was really fun to, uh, watching them uh, prep the dish in front of you. And I, I think that's another really uh, great thing about uh, sitting in, in this uh, counter seating is uh, just watching them prepare everything for you and serving it to you and then you get to see everything. Completely agree on that, Micah. Um, one of the things if you are making reservations is you want to pretty much make a comment if you want to sit over at the bar. Um, and, you know, it's it's entertaining because you get to sit there and you get to watch, you get to hear the explanations, but you get to see them cook and they're doing it right in front of you. So that just makes the uh, the whole dining experience wonderful. Yeah, and I think for, for some of the staff, you can interact with them too as they serve the dish to, uh, to you. Uh, so you can ask them a little bit more questions and towards the end of the meal, you'll see more uh, interaction with the uh, chef hero there. And one of the things that uh, I really kind of amazes me is because you can tell the staff is pretty small it's a it's a not a large restaurant but they also don't have a large staff but just the uh just the work they put in to get everything ready and to get you know the service for the guests you know it, it's just top notch so definitely something that uh that is noticeable when you're here yeah and and for this uh, next dish uh we got this uh uh, seasonal fish sashimi um, that served kind of like an old fisherman style where they got the strip jack and everything is just uh, uh, stripped into little pieces here um, I thought this one was really refreshing for for being so hot in August and it was a really really tasty dish yeah he mentioned something about wanting to kind of make it more of a, a fisherman's type of dish something that's you know, even though it was fancy, it's not meant to be fancy, but yet it's fancy. So, um, you know, they did a great job with that one. It was it was fantastic. And uh, watching uh, the other uh, chef here uh, just cutting all the uh, A5 Wagyu, um, that's actually the Miyakasi uh, Wagyu um, that they're preparing for this uh, next dish. And they make that one with the sukiyaki style, which is a sweet soy sauce. And they've also got the egg yolk in there, the egg yolk sauce, and they uh, butter sauteed those uh, mushrooms, and then they topped it off with leeks. And I know I've been watching them char grill that uh, A5 Wagyu, and they, it looks really, really good. It, it was delicious. I really did love this, uh, this dish. Um, I mean, they were all great so far, but this dish, you know, with the uh, just just the wagyu, then the sweetness and the savory of the wagyu with the egg yolk that had a creaminess to it. It was just well put together. It just made the dish so great. Yeah, I, I think that egg yolk it, it, it's a really good uh, dish uh, uh, pairing with any meats in general. But even because the wagyu is so creamy in itself and so uh, uh, flavorful by itself. Uh, just with the egg it's just so much better yeah agreed it just brought it to another level that kind of just brought out that savoriness sweetness creaminess of the wagyu um so yeah that, that really hit my taste bud uh, when i took a bite of that one do you remember what kind of uh mushrooms those are simon i don't remember what they were but they were a good they were a hearty mushroom so there was a good bite to it um they had a nice chew um it wasn't light so it definitely um, with the, the meat itself, it, it, it kind of had the similar texture, um, but it actually I would have to say that the meat was much more tender than the mushroom itself, but um, yeah, I couldn't remember exactly what mushroom it was. Yeah, I, I remember uh, starting off eating this dish uh, just by the mushroom by itself first. Then I went in and uh, grabbed a little bit of the the, the uh, wagyu and then 
kind of like what you're doing here, Simon. Uh, just pairing it with the mushroom and the leek and then taking a big bite of it all together. But I kind of like just eating it all separate as well. Yeah, that's usually what I, I tend to do. I like to taste each kind of individual ingredient as I can. Um, just to kind of see what the flavors are and then put it together and see what kind of changes with those flavors. And then uh, towards the end of the night here, kind of towards mid-meal to end, uh, Chef Hero came out and he was interacting with us, uh, showing us this 14-day uh, aged uh, uh, tuna here. And uh, it was right before we had the um, nigiri uh, dish that they served. And this was pretty fun to look at. I mean, Look at how big that piece is. Yeah, he brought this nice 14-day uh, aged uh, bluefin tuna. And he was explaining about kind of the process that they're going through. And it was um, actually what we were going to eat. And it was, it was coming up pretty soon. But he just brought this nice, beautiful piece out and just showed it to everybody in the restaurant. Um, very, very awesome. I, I, It's such a beautiful piece that uh, you know, we had to, of course, have that into the uh, video. So with these uh, three uh, nigiri pieces, we, we started off with the right side with the golden snapper. In the middle was like an amber jack uh, marinated in sweet soy sauce. So they're explaining not to dip it in any more soy sauce. And then the far left one was a seared uh, bonito fish. And I didn't really know what was a bonito fish. So I looked it up when I got home. And bonito fish is actually like a family of like sardines or mackerel or tuna and they were also saying that it could be like a skipjack tuna uh, with like a moderate fat content which is kind of interesting but it was pretty good yeah I really enjoyed it um, there's an episode where we were in Vegas at a place called Wakuda and you can see the link in the description box below for that um, we paid $600 when we were down in Vegas and that restaurant was kind of disappointing and for the price we paid for this meal here I just felt so much better coming and eating this than we did when we were down in, in Wakuda down in Vegas. Yeah I agree with Simon there this one is definitely a much uh, better restaurant um, I actually came here for one of my birthdays as well and I take, I've taken uh, my other friends here and we've all enjoyed this restaurant and this uh, next one here uh, is a chakusa uh, bowl uh, dish it's kind of like a rice with uh, tea soup tempura uh, sea eel with a uh, fresh uh, wasabi and they were explaining us to lightly mix it with a spoon but the rice itself is is really uh, crispy it, it kind of remind me of eating like the end bits of the fried rice that you find on the walk where it's just really uh, crispy and just that texture of it mixed in the soup I think it's really good yeah I had that same feeling um, there's a dish called sizzling rice and I know they, they usually fry it and they they stick they fry the rice in oil and they put it into some kind of soup and then it kind of makes a sizzling sound and that kind of reminded me of that where the rice was really light and then um, had a nice crisp to it with the uh, with the uh, infused uh, dashi broth. It was very very delicious. And then of course we always got end the night with a dessert. And I'm really glad uh, with this menu the dessert they made it with the white peach compost, rose tea jelly, and then they had the house made Earl Grey ice cream and a fresh uh, mint and cherry there. And this one was really really good. I mean. I love Earl Grey flavored ice cream by itself already, but with that peach uh, uh, compo and that rose uh, tea jelly mixed in together, this was like heaven. Yeah, that uh, rose tea jelly, that complemented the Earl Grey ice cream really, really well. I think it, the two together just brought out the other flavor. Um, just so much more and so I really really enjoyed eating the two together um, usually uh, I'll eat the Earl Grey ice cream before on other places and and you know you can taste it but it's not um, as strong it's not not as flavorful as at least it, it for what I'm looking for but in this case those two together is just a really great combination
And to wrap up the episode is our notable. For this notable, we decided to choose the entire Waza restaurant as our experience. Uh, I believe this one is a great restaurant if you love uh, changing menus every month and having fresh ingredients. A lot of them are local ingredients too. And uh, having a great experience watching them prepare everything in front of you and having a great overall experience, always leaving happy. Uh, one of my favorite restaurants in this area. Yeah, Mike, I completely agree. Um, we, we talked about what we wanted to do in terms of what kind of stuck out. And, you know, as always, um, everything kind of was just great. And so we couldn't pick just one thing since there were so many wonderful dishes. So we decided to pick the entire restaurant. So definitely a recommendation on our part to come and try this Kaiseki restaurant in Seattle. If you've enjoyed the content you've seen, don't forget to support the channel and hit like and subscribe. And if you want to see additional pictures of food and our travels, go over to our Instagram page and follow us there. And thanks for watching.